Yo, what's up, everybody? If you haven't heard about Anchor, let me tell you, this is one of the easiest ways to make a podcast. First of all, it's free. Second of all, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit the podcast right from your phone or computer. Third, Anchor will also distribute for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Then you can also make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Later. Welcome to the Lion's Den with Seth. A podcast where progressive men and women can learn and teach each other the ways of the land. The Lion's Den is where royalty comes to counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Seth. What's going on? What's going on? What's goes in on? Hopefully everybody's doing good because it's Sunday and it's, it's, it's a sunny day. And, and hopefully you're, you're enjoying everything outside of everything that's going on hopefully you are going on and checking on yourself and that's what we're going to be talking about today but um like we always do around this time i'm about to introduce the rest of the den hey larry larry how you feeling bro hey i'm feeling good man i actually went to church today believe it or not you know and i don't really go to church i'm not gonna front like i'm a church guy or anything but i went to church as part of I hate to say it, but it, I'll say it. I'm being real with and authentic. Usually when I'm getting ready to deploy, that's one of my regiments. Like I always go to church the week before I deploy out. You know, family always encouraged that. They want me to go there and all that stuff. So it, it was good to hear the word today. I ain't gonna lie. And then I, I noticed when I get back, I probably go a little bit more often than I should. Like I'm being real. So we're going into that transformation where I'm starting to grow as a human being, right? You're getting that spiritual, getting that spirituality in me. Uh, which at least to what we're talking about today. But yeah, so today was a good day. It's going to be a busy week. And, uh, you know, I'm just trying to enjoy my time with the family, man, while I can. Well, look, shout out to you for doing that and 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 and, and publicly admitting the fact that you are a bedside Baptist. Bruh, stop playing with God. Go on with yourself, and I can't stand you. Nah, and I'm telling everybody. Hey, Will, what's going on, Will? Yeah, what's going on, Dan? Great, great day. Beautiful weather out here in the St. Louis area. Um, great to be in the presence of my guys and the special guests we're going to have today. You got to put some positivity in front of you, given what's going on around you. So don't engulf yourself in all the negativity. You got to put some type of positivity because the energy is important, right? But, but shout out to everybody for tuning in. Remember to share, share, share. Get this information to somebody that needs it. Make sure you don't be stanchy. Larry, praise God. I didn't go to church. I want to go get some bikes today for the family, but I am drinking this num num juice. So hey, shouts out to everybody. Look at you. Listen, what we don't need you to do is use num num juice and crash into somebody. But cheers to you, my brother. Right on. Hey, what's going on, Herm? How you feeling, bro? Man, I'm doing pretty good, man. Like Will said, the weather is pretty nice out there. It's like here in St. Louis, it'd be cold one minute, and then it's next thing you know, it's hot. So hey, Larry, I feel you on that going to church when uh before an appointment or something like that happens man i gotta say i'm guilty of that too so, y'all ought to be ashamed of your damn man, self hey, look, stop man. playing <laughs> hey but this show man i have the honor and pleasure of introducing somebody i've known for a while now an authentic genuine leader man somebody that i know that's always going to keep it real with you she, she's the kind of person that you know what i'm saying that you can always go to you know what i'm saying she has that warm and biting personality but she's always going to keep it real with you you know what i'm saying so i want to thank her ahead of time for coming to spend some time with us uh chief mass song host Gabisky. thank you ah, welcome 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 hey 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 how you doing am hey, um, and look we're gonna let everybody know right now this is my auntie hope i don't care what you say you think you knew her longer than me it don't matter nah she's like my auntie because she, she's she's getting ready to 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 drop some of them jewels so how you doing ma'am i'm doing fantastic you're right it is a beautiful sunny day and so I, i'm just really glad to be here hanging out with y'all today um listening to you guys banter and talk it just lifts your spirit so much just you know seeing all the smiling faces and you're right 
Why are y'all going to church just before you head out the door? See, look, Get there, right? Hey, listen to AT. <laughs> Message. Nah, you know what I'm talking about. Why don't you start going to church when you wake up? Nah, in the morning, waiting to Sunday. But so anyway, ma'am. So we want to, we want to a thank you again for coming to the Lions Den, and it's 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 an honor, seriously, and it, it's it's time for some uh, some peaceful guidance if you will and encouragement especially with what's going on right now so how important is checking on you to you and and how important should individuals take that you know especially in these times I think it's imperative. I mean, we have no idea what other people are going through. Oftentimes people are smiling at your face because they don't want anybody to think they're weak. They don't want anybody to think they're down. They don't want anybody to think they're trolling for attention. Um, So oftentimes people aren't going to show you anything other than a smile. And so if you know somebody and if you know that their demeanor's changed, because sometimes people just aren't smilers and that's okay. But if their demeanor is changed and you're not there to notice it, that can be severely detrimental. I think it's wildly important, especially right now, um, because people are so physically distanced from one another that we spend a little more time socially connecting. Absolutely. Absolutely right. And and first, I want to, before we get into Herm, because I know he got some questions and we all do, but I want to give a special shout out to the pride out there. I see you all out there and you got a uh, you got the fan base out here, ma'am. Look, you got Miss uh, Angie Jordan. She says, Aloha, ma'am. OK, right on, hey, right on. Aloha. Hey, she said, what's going on? Hey, Satchel, David Satchel. He said, hey, what's up, Hope? So shout out to y'all. Listen, if y'all see this, please share it because we're getting ready to really dive in deep. This is some information that individuals need right now okay so be sure share 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 it only take two seconds and it costs you absolutely nothing to do her what you got bro chief so we're talking about checking on you and checking on the people to make sure everybody is okay but i'm of the belief like when you're on a plane they say make sure you got your mask on first before you help somebody else um so what are some of the things that you do to make sure that you're good and you're ready to go uh, in order to take on the burdens and the bearings of the people that, that you're charged with taking care of, making sure you yourself is fine first. Uh, so I'll tell you, I have two big habits. One, I do better than the other, um, but both I have found extremely helpful if I could just make it a bigger part of my routine. Um, I reflect a lot. There's a lot of things that we get ourselves into, good, bad, and indifferent. If you don't stop and think about how it went, how'd you do? How could you have done it better? Do you owe any apologies or thank yous? Um, So I reflect a lot. And I think that that's really healthy for me because one, it forces conversation. um, But two, it also reminds me of how many amazing people I have in my world. Um, But then two, meditation. Um, I was a huge skeptic. I thought, man, how weird it is to be sitting by myself, staring out in the middle of nowhere or you know, crisscross applesauce on the sidewalk with my eyeballs closed. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I'll tell you, 10 minutes a day, it's, it's so worth it. It allows you to just clear your mind, be who you are, where you are. Every single one of us is different. I'm an extreme extrovert. So I love human interaction, especially little humans. They're my favorite, but every time I have the opportunity to just sit and be with myself, it reminds me how much I need that from time to time. Cause I'm such an extrovert. I expect that just plugging into other people and sharing their energy is the only thing that makes me better. But that isn't the truth. Sometimes you just really need some time with yourself in your own mind to clear your mind. And so, um, and then of course there's the human interaction because I, I know that even the most introverted of humans has a social connection and without it, we're, it's detrimental. So um, I tend to find my way to get connected to people as much as often as frequent as I can, because it's just good for your soul. Yeah. So for me, when you yeah. said meditation, I've, I need I need some tips because every time I try to do that, I end up with a headache some kind of way. You know what? No, <laughs> know listen. What oh wait, no. I'm like, I'm like no I, I know what the hell it is. You, you, you <laughs> look. It's it's, ca- it's called you 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 borderline hungover. You feel me? And so, so you start dozing off. This is a trip. You ain't down meditating. You're trying to self-medicate. But listen, ma'am, look, to your point, you said something good as far as being a extrovert. All right. So as being an extrovert like myself, I love people, love connecting with people and, and just love getting it in. But 
a certain situation, what a current situation kind of causes us to find different ways to connect. And how would you say this has changed your way of um, exerting your energy, if you will, as being an, an extrovert? Uh, well, so I'm I'm a hugger. I love, I mean, Kaiser Permanente says hugs are the best medicine, right? And so I'm a hugger. I love to share the energy of other people. Obviously, being amidst a global pandemic, hugging other people just isn't good practice. And so <laughs> no, don't missed... touch me. <laughs> Where your mask at? Spread it out. <laughs> I have missed out on that quite a bit. Um, but I have some amazing humans in my life, and they have done a great job of FaceTimes and Zooms and Google Duos and everything they can do to stay connected with me. And we have girl wine nights and I have sibling FaceTimes. And so we, they've just done a great job of checking in on me and making sure that I'm doing okay, which has caused me to reciprocate and check on my other, you know, uh, extroverted friends to make sure that they've got people looking in on them as well. Oh, dope. That's good. That's real good. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, we got my auntie Hope, Chief Hope, on here, right? She's here to help us out when it comes down to checking on yourself and checking in. And don't get me wrong, we all have responsibilities to certain degrees, right? So, we have work and we have home and we have to take care of those things, but we also have to take care of ourselves. So, it's imperative that you find ways to do that. First thing I would say is to know yourself, right? <laughs> know yourself and then find out what it is that you need to do to be the best version of yourself. Will, what you got, bro? What's going on, Chief? Again, thank you for being on. I uh, love your energy because I think energy is contagious. But something from my experience that I see often is when you see a lot of people in leadership with that great energy and they think because they exert that to others that they, everyone should feel the same way. So as a leader, what do you do in regards to adaptability, to adapting to individuals that don't necessarily receive that same energy and react the same way? Yo, hold on. Yeah, wait. Yeah, that's a dope question. And get ready for this because I'm going to put something else on top of it. The, what do you tell those folks that, you know, hey, why you don't smile all the time? You just need to smile. Listen, first of all, I, I smile with something funny. <laughs> you dig? And it's okay. But, you know, how do you, you know what I'm saying? Okay, go ahead. Mm. Go ahead. No, I think it's a brilliant question. And so I learned a lot about that when I was a military training instructor, right? So I originally went at being a TI as though every single young man and woman needed a knife hand and a loud voice in order to get anything done. And you realize that people are batched into, you know, what you could probably categorize as little groups. And the first group you would yell at and they were on it. They'd go do anything you told them to do because they just didn't want to get you to get yelled at or they thought, ooh, another challenge. I'll get it over with. The next group would turn into a puddle of butter on the floor and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to do with you. Like, how do I get you to do what we need done, right? Um, the next group would cross their arms, just complete indignance uh, and, and wouldn't do anything at all because who are you and how are you going to tell them? So you had to learn different strokes for different folks. And I was privileged to, to do something called a Myers-Briggs um, survey so that they could walk me through different personality types and how people sort of give and receive communication. And so um, I had to learn that if you would, and I call it momming people, because I'm, you know, I'm a mom. And so it's innate, you know, how to like tell people to pack their bags. It's time to go on a guilt trip. That's just what you do. And so um, I remember, you know, I didn't think this was going to be so difficult. I thought you were, you know, I thought you were so big and bad that you'd have been the first one done with this. So for you to sit here crossing your arms, I guess I'm a little disappointed, right? And then you'd watch them sort of buck up and be willing to go accomplish the task. And so you had to learn that there's different ways to lead different people. And at first you'd get your feelings hurt. Like, why am I failing? How come they're not going to do what we need them to do? You thought it would be so easy just to yell. Um, and so I had to learn a lot about people, but Sergeant Gonzalez, I don't know where he is or if he's anywhere in the world, but he's a master sergeant. We were deployed to Afghanistan together. Um, he was the king of stoicism. You could not make the man smile. And my first few interactions with him, I thought, man, is he just mad at me? Do I know him from a previous life? Does he hate me somehow? Like, I don't know what's going on. Right. And so one day I said, you never smile. He said, you always smile. And I said, oh, well, that's true, right? And so I said, ah! are you... <laughs> nah, that's what you get. 
<laughs> I said, are you always mad? He goes, are you truly always happy? And I'm like, we're going to play this game all day. Okay. <laughs> Where's like, this dude at? I, I think I like amazing. him. Yeah. yeah. He, he was in Alaska at the time. But one of the things I learned from him is he's like, I'm smiling on the inside. And I was like, oh, okay. So he didn't have to reciprocate my face. You ever notice when you go to take a picture of somebody, you tell them to smile and you're smiling, thinking that somehow that's going to generate a smile. It's not true. People will receive the information and might be equally as stoked about it. They just don't necessarily convey it the same way you do. It's like artists, for example. One artist is a musician and the next artist is a painter and the next artist is a dancer. They're all conveying art. They're just doing it in their own way. And I had to learn that people receive leadership lessons in the exact same way. They're going to convey to you however they expect to receive from you. It's kind of like, um, it's like the golden rule. Everybody says, do unto others as you would have done unto you, which couldn't be further from the truth. It's more like the five love languages. Do unto others as they would have done unto them. Hey, so, look, hey, you didn't say it. Go on there. Listen, we ain't got time to get that deep into it. They ain't ready. <laughs> Ain't they ain't ready because it, it makes so much sense. And then I feel as though with those golden rules and it, you're absolutely right. It is the love languages. And instead mm -hmm. of treating people the way you want to be treated, how about you treat them the way they want to be treated? Come on right. now. You get, get out my, get out my head. Hey, Larry, what you got, bro? All right, Chief. Uh, I want to talk about since we're in this current conditions that we are, when we talk about the COVID-19, what are you guys doing it wherever you you're at. I can't. I think you're in California now. Uh, what are you guys doing as far as your leadership team to stay intact with your folks right now? Uh, what are you guys doing to connect with them and checking on them? As you know, so and make sure that it's authentic. To like, what are you guys doing? Are you doing anything like beyond the norm of the Zoom and the Texas? Or are you doing things like to really connect with your folks and let them know, hey, we here for you. Great question. So I'll tell you, when we started this, we all felt like a baby giraffe just learning how to walk, right? It was awkward and messy, and we couldn't find our, our game. Um, and so I didn't know what to do, but I'm a mom. And a lot of our folks that are dorm residents are the same age as my son. And so I thought, well, if I was to go bang on my son's door and wanted to see how he was doing, how would I do it? So I quick made a trip to the store and bought a whole bunch of individually wrapped candies, coloring books and crayons and Play-Doh and just ridiculousness that you would never go by yourself. But if you got it, you'd be like, oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've played with any of this. You would almost get a little bit of excitement out of it. And I literally bought enough for every single dorm resident. And we went and knocked on every door and offered candy and games and stuff to these folks that were at their rooms by themselves, just so I could look them in the whites of their eyes and make sure that they were doing okay. How are you? Is there anything you need? That became contagious. Our first sergeants were doing it. Our chiefs were doing it. And then people started to get creative. How could we do this? So we started doing virtual chat rooms and that kind of stuff. We did virtual commander's calls. But better than that, like our force support squadron started doing these drive-in movies. So they took the movie that would be shown in the base theater and they put it on a gigantic screen and they let people pull their cars up. And as long as their windows were up, they could sit and watch a movie. We could see and make sure they were okay. We've been doing a lot of things like that where our first sergeants have been bringing in, like we are a long way from almost anywhere because we're at Cannon. Um, it's amazing little community, but it's out in the middle of nowhere. And so they were bringing in Chick-fil-A sandwiches and stuff and letting people do a drive through to get their sandwiches just so we could see their faces. And how are you doing? And is there anything you need? Man, that is awesome. So two things. First thing, I heard you say sandwich. Right on, because it was a sandwich. <laughs> but um, not just that, though. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you guys are understanding and, 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 and hearing the initiative and also innovative thoughts and, and, and ways to connect with people. I mean, think about a drive-in and, you know, doing that drive-up and coloring and, and all this other stuff you know what ma'am i can actually see why people say you know chief hope is dope for real because you're thinking outside of the traditional thought process so shout out to you i do appreciate that uh let me see will uh no i'm sorry herm what you got Herm? so i just need to validate some of this a little bit man when i first met chief uh we was at travis together um she was the career assistant advisor she was a senior master sergeant I was a master select, about to put on master. And just because I was an FS, I don't know if it's because I was FSS or because I was in her vicinity. I just know that she had so much energy and hugged me like we knew each other forever. You know what I mean? And it's always been that way. Every time we see each other, 
it's always that way. So it's never, and I'm like, I'm like, and so I wonder, you know what I'm saying? What are you doing when you're down? Like when you got to have some down points, you can't be, well, I'm, I'm asking, are you, there's got to be some times where you're down, where you're just not feeling it. How do you get that drive? Because every time I see you, your high energy, you're always turned on. How do you do it? So I tell you, I'm not always smiley, but I reserve that sort of for myself because two things are true. Energy is contagious. Seth said it in the very beginning, right? It's contagious. Will said it too. Um, if you walk around in the doldrums and you're mad and pissy, you're going to share that. People will feel it and it's just not good. It's, it's like, you know, sour grapes, they breed sour wine. Nobody drinks that. So I just am not a fan. And so when I'm having a tough time or a bad day, I have a small group of people that I know I could call any time of day or night and they will hear me. They will be with me. Some of them will even cry with me. Um, it just, it's just the thing I reserve for a small group of people that are my foundation. The rest of the time, I, I want to bring the energy that's going to bring up the mood in the room. I just am not about helping other people find more to be unhappy with. I mean, the world that we live in, unhappy surrounds us. It just is the truth. And so it's it's like Sean Aker. He does the happiness advantage. It was a great TED talk that came out in 2012. Um, and so one of the things he talks about is kind of like we get from our master resilience training. If you just walk yourself through a couple of positive events that you know are true to you each day, it just helps reinforce your happiness. And so I do that. I've done that ever since I had the privilege of attending the master resilience training course at the University of Pennsylvania with Joe Bogdan, by the way, loved his face. Um, and so getting that training just sort of helped reinforce for me that you have to look for the positive and it just reminds you not to come home and say, oh my gosh, it was the worst day ever. If you run through it, you might've had a single event that day. But you allowed that single event to trash the whole day when if you'd have let the 99,000 other positive events drive your day, you'd have forgotten about that one negative one. And so I just try really hard to stick with the positive, not to be blind to the negative, but to not let it rule my life. Yo, yeah, and, and let's just, hold on, let me give you something. Message. Okay, because they need to hear that. But look, we're going to take a second, let everybody know what we're talking about, checking on yourself. And you got a lot of people here on live that's um, giving you big ups, right? I see Miss Willie listen, uh, Li uh, Lily Wilson asked if we can clone her. And you know, that uh -huh. I wish we could. Oh my God. I mean, like for real, for real. Because true, not everybody loves that type of, you know, tree hugging type of, you know, four lenses, the blue. Not everybody can dig that, but I'll tell you one thing, they never forget it. You get what I'm saying? Uh, you got individuals out here. Let me see, Miss Aretha. Yeah, hey, Boston. So she's over there in Germany. She says she can't wait for you to come over there. I can't wait. Yeah. Hey, I got a shout out for one. Uh, Chief Master Sergeant Malvina Smith is on here. Uh, no. She's on here. Services, she the services chief. Her uh, son was actually one of my troops at Travis. Wow. Alexander, yeah. Small world. I have loved Mel for a long time. You guys, I have to give Mel a shout out. Um, I told you, I disclosed to you, I lost my brother recently and I was going through a tough time. So I was kind of not playing out on social media. Mel took the time and gave me a call just to see how I was doing. I mean, she definitely has a heart the size of, of this planet. Just huge love for you. I love you, Mel. Wow. That's awesome. And we'll touch, we'll mm -hmm. touch on that in a little bit. Hey, Will, what you got, bro? Chief, again, I love your energy. Thank you. You, you go through a lot of opportunities where they give you different skill sets to adapt, to learn, to recognize. As a leader, how does that resonate down to the rest of your senior NCOs, your tech sergeant, your staff sergeant, so they can kind of carry that same empathy and be able to recognize some of the trends and things that you're able to do so they're able to lead airmen better? Because I think we have a very big gap in that, that middle management and I don't think it's just because they want to. I think it's because they got promoted so fast, they don't have the experience or aptitude to do those things. So what can you say you do to make sure that they can kind of duplicate some of your activities and some of your skill sets? You are singing my tune. I have said that for so many years, that 
you know, the Air Force, we promote to vacancy. So this year, I think we did something to the tune of like a 53% promotion rate for staff sergeants, right? And I was told, and I don't know if it was a true statistic for if we were just embellishing, but that if we had promoted to vacancy, we'd have promoted 97% of the eligible senior airmen to staff sergeants this year. And so think about it. If you come in as an A1C, you make senior airmen below the zone, you then make staff your first try. You aren't even into a four-year enlist or you know, through the end of your four-year enlistment before you're wearing a staff sergeant strike. And now you're in charge of somebody else. And so you hadn't even been in since breakfast. You've not figured out how to take care of yourself. How do you take care of anybody else? And so then all of a sudden, we just we promote you up to technical sergeant because more people had treated that year. And I know people that are master sergeants, even senior master sergeants that have never rated on anybody. And so how do you know what you don't know? And so what do I do? One, I don't keep secrets on anything. Is I am I try my hardest to be transparent. If it is not something I am legally bound to keep to myself, I will share it with anybody. And if people are embarrassed to ask, I'll put it on a piece of paper and slide it under the table. I don't care how you get it. I just want you to have it. And so I I will share anything. People say, Chief, will you do a, a PDC course with us? I'll do it. I'll go teach them. I'll come to your squadron at midnight and talk to your 10 people. It's not like we have to have this gigantic group. We can do Zoom chats. I, I did one recently with a, a group of Girl Scouts. Like, tell me what you need. I will find a way to get it. I don't know everything. I promise you that. As a matter of fact, I frustrate people from time to time with as much as I ask questions, but I have to remind them questions are not an aggressive act. <laughs> They're just questions because I just don't know. Right. And so I tend to share. I just share. I know that the only way you ever move up or on is to make somebody else your replacement. And so I try my hardest to share as much as I can. I, I reference Stephen Covey a lot, but one last thought. One thing I really love about Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is he says, you know, people tend to live in a world of scarcity, that if I give you a piece of pie, there's less pie for me. But the thing I absolutely love is when we talk about, how about I just teach you how to make pie? And then there's enough pie for everybody. Oh, my God. You know what? Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first time coming to the Lions Den, welcome, welcome, welcome. And right now we got my Auntie Hope on here. She just dropped a major jewel. And the thing is, it's so simple. Yeah. It is so simple. It, you know, that's what life is about. We make it more complicated. You understand? It's almost like, mm -hmm. hey, I don't want to hold my light because I'm afraid that, you know, if I share it with you, it's going to dim mine down. No, idiot. You get what I mean? The, the whole that's point right. of this is to make sure we're lighting each other up. So this is this is pure leadership. And I love your example of sharing. And I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the term of pivoting. OK, taking something. So, for example, you're in a position, right? You get something from leadership. Right. And it's your job to pivot to give it to your subordinate. All right. But it doesn't stop there. You take that information and then you pivot it back. You get what I mean? Individuals right. don't do that authentically. Right. What happens is they will get information. They hold it and then they give you little bits and pieces of it. And then when they when you're trying to tell them a concern they hold on to it but they don't voice it so now higher leadership they don't understand the true need of the you know where the rubber meets the road and i appreciate you for that just sharing oh my god why are you holding it for yourself you can't take it with you you go die with anyway i just had to let that out there hey larry what you got bro hey hey chief this goes right into what we're talking about just building upon it right so my question is, uh, I'm speaking on the engaged because I saw that in the comments of how engaged leadership and how uh, uh, effective it can be. And, and obviously all the examples you're giving is showing engaged leadership. But let's talk about that vulnerability piece, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been in the Air Force 13 years and I've touched three AFSCs in those 13 years. So that vulnerability piece for me is real because I have a Master Sergeant Stripe on my chest, but that don't mean I know everything. All right, because I've touched three different career fields. I haven't mastered anything yet in the Air Force, and I don't really plan on to. I'm just being honest. It's just I just want to touch a little bit of everything and just get a, get a feel for everything. But where I'm going with this is talk about that vulnerability piece and, and how that is important when we're talking about leading because if airmen can't relate to you, it's going to be hard to reach them. So I think we're shifting that way now in the new Air Force, but can you speak on that? It's because 
I'm, I'm sure you've seen some things in your time. Absolutely. So I'll give you one example of when I was a military training instructor. So back in the day, we would go through very vigorous MTI school. We would push our first flight um, under the supervision of a trained MTI, and then we would go on to, to push our own flight. Um, and But at that time, we didn't really have master sergeants on what we called the street. Now they call it the line. But we didn't have master sergeants on the street. Um, they would come in and go straight to supervisory roles. But it was a little convoluted because they would go through the training. They may or may not push a flight, and then they're sitting in the leadership role. And they were quick to tell those of us that were on the street working 18-hour days, not getting any sleep, starving, thirsty, how we sucked and what we were doing wrong and how they knew what we were going through. And you couldn't get more frustrated because you're like, you have no idea what I'm going through. You have no idea what I'm going through. And you're going to sit on your ivory tower and tell me how I'm doing it wrong. Why don't you come down here and wear my shoes and then tell me how this feels, right? And so we used to just get so frustrated about that. So now being in the leadership role, one of the things that I have worked really hard to do is not try to pretend I know something that I don't know. Um, so when I first got into AFSOC, I'll tell you, I'm a medic, right? I had never been into AFSOC. I was privileged to have the opportunity to come. And so when I got here, I, I was quick to say, look, I understand how to lead people because I understand how to love people through tough times and how to celebrate their good stuff with them. I have no idea what special operations looks or smells like. And so please hold my hand and walk me through it. Treat me like a fourth grader. I'm okay with it. They were really receptive to that. They were great because one thing that I've learned a lot about not just the operations side of the house, but even the air commandos that are on the agile combat support side of the house, they love to show you what they know. They love to show you what they do. And so if you walk in with your vulnerability and you say, I don't know, but I'm willing to sit beside you and have you teach me, they get excited. They want to show you what they know. They want to show you how hard they can work or how hard they have worked. And so they're glad to walk you through it. And they won't even treat you like you're stupid when you're stumbling around in the back of an airplane, calling it the butt of the plane. And they're like, no, 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 it's a tail. Right. Is so, it? I thought it was the butt. Oh, damn. My bad. No. Shit. What would it? What? It's the what? The tail? It's the tail. Who knew? I, was always, I know. I was like, oh, it's the head and the butt. They're like, no, it's the nose and the tail. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but so I think it's, it's intimidating and it's embarrassing, especially to walk in with a chief stripe or with a master sergeant stripe and say, you know, I just don't know. But I think when you demonstrate that vulnerability, people are willing to almost crowd around you to make sure that you're shielded from any of the naysaying because they've got you at that point because you weren't trying to pull a blanket over their eyes. And at least that's been my experience and I've been incredibly, you know, grateful for it. Dope. That's dope. Hey, so ladies and gentlemen, again, we're here with Chief Hope, Auntie Hope, and she's here to give you some advice on how to take care of you. All right. Now it's about taking care of you. And if you are interested in reaching out, have a question for the chief. The number is posted. That's 618-792-6747. One more time, 618-792-6747. But before you call, before you call, and even if you call right now, you're going to have to wait. I got a question for you, A.T. Uh, now you say you're from Hawaii originally? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. What was your favorite food? Oh, it has nothing to do with why. My favorite food is nachos. Nachos? <laughs> really? Nachos? Well, you know what? It's it's funny. It's funny you said that because um, have you ever been to uh, Kevlar's Grill? No, you probably haven't, but it's okay. What, let me tell you a little something about Kevlar's Grill, Chief. Kevlar's Grill is one of our sponsors, and they have the best nachos this side of the Mississippi. Yeah, I said it straight up, straight up, straight up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, check out Kevlar's Grill. They have the gratitude box, and this is where you can purchase food for your first responders. Great food. Great food, okay? And they have Grubhub, 25-mile radius, ladies and gentlemen. They got the hamburgers, salmon patties, all of that. They're great. The ribs, too, and everything. They got vegan meals, all that is Trust me, it's all great. And it's inside of the VFW, all right? The address is at the, uh, like I said, outside the VFW or inside the VFW, outside the Scott Air Force Base VFW post 4186. That number is 618-416-5700. But not just that. You said that you have some kids. What, what are the ages, ma'am? 
Uh, so my daughter is 19 and my son is 23. Oh, okay. Well, look, he likes some gym shoes, don't he? I know he not, somebody, <laughs> all of them like some gym shoes. Well, check it out. Have them and, and you achieve, you got the bread. So go to Upper Soul, okay? <laughs> Upper Soul on Instagram. Have them check this on now. And, they, and and I'm sure they like these retro kicks. You know what I'm talking about? They're good. So go there and check them out, ladies and gentlemen. This young man has the hookup on all of the authentic retro shoes the jordans the adidas you name it all right specifically specifically for those sneaker heads and again that's upper soul that's you p-p-e-r-s-o-l-e-z right on right on like what you hear so far make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now the lion's den podcast is made possible by listeners like you Thank you for your support. Now, back to the show. So, T, so I want to I want to switch directions a little bit. Well, a lot of bit. Um, there was a report that came out USA Today. Um, even though this report didn't come out official Air Force channels, we we are aware that everybody has seen it. So, with checking in on you, there's going to be a large group of Air Force Airmen that might be feeling a a, a, a type of way right now. Um, what do you? What are your thoughts on that? On that report and what these airmen might be feeling? What would be your message to them right now as they uh, navigate what they're supposed to think about this? So there's a lot of thoughts actually, but my first thought is don't discount them. Right? A, a lot of times, if if I tell you that you know I grew up poor, you want to tell me how much more poor you grew up, or if I tell you that you know my skin is dry. You want to tell me how much more dry. That's the last thing we want to do when people are going through trying to figure out what what's up and what's down, what's right. And what's wrong is to try to play the, I know what you're going through game. That's, that's probably the last thing we want to do. What you want to do is be with somebody. You don't want to immediately try to draw parallels on, Oh, I've, I've experienced that too. Especially if, I'm, if you're black and I'm white and we're talking about stuff like that and I'm trying to tell you, oh, I did, it doesn't matter. It's not about me. It's about you. How can I be here with you? I want to look you in the whites of your eyes and I want to tell you it's okay to feel however you feel. I want to tell you that you're not wrong for feeling lost or for feeling vulnerable or for feeling afraid. I'm going to be here with you. Tell me what I can do to support you. I'll sit beside you. I'll walk alongside you. I'll tell you that your truth is yours. I'm going to use an analogous, right, with a, a letter of counseling. You have two airmen that do the exact same thing, and you give them both a letter of counseling. One airman's like, all right, I'm going to get up. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to let that affect me. And the other airman is going to sit down and cry and want to get out, and they feel like the whole world is over because they got in trouble. There's going to be that person that's going to look at the airman that's having a tough time and say, it's just an LOC. Get over it. You have no idea what that person's history is like. You have no idea the experiences that they have. You have no idea what their family makeup or background was. You have no idea where they've come from. Don't discount it. Their truth is their reality. The best thing you can do is just be with them. So check in on them. Look at them. Ask them, how are you doing? What can I do for you? Oftentimes, it's to just shut up and listen. Um, Because sometimes people just want to be heard. (laughs) You know what? It, it it's so it sounds so simple. It does. And again, it really is that simple. And and I know me and the gentleman, we always talk about this, but um I put this in, in the book and uh you know, sometimes you have to just wait. And that stands for why am I talking? Sometimes you don't really have to say anything, but the fact that you are there helps individuals. Right. And this goes along with uh, a question that uh, an individual had. Uh, Miss Keisha, she was saying, basically, what would you say to individuals based off of this current situation uh, that's dealing with this emotionally? You know, what would you say to, let's say, a an airman? OK, this airman, you, you've never been to Detroit. All right. You've never been to Detroit. But this airman, all he knows is what he's what he's known up into this one time coming into the military, but he's been seeing this daily, daily, but now it's hurting extremely hard. Right. And not, not just that, we also have this COVID stuff going on right now. What would you, what would you say to that airman? So again, I reiterate, sometimes people just want to get off their chest what their frustration is. 
we all know that sometimes just to talk about what you're going through is helpful. Um, that's the reason why counseling works. Sometimes just to talk about it is helpful. Um, so we have preservation of the force and family here in ASOC, and it's a, it's a program through so. Uh, SOCOM, but there's also the comprehensive airman fitness, there's true North. And we have these things called peer to peer uh, support counselors. It just allows you to have somebody that wants to sit and listen. They just want to hear whatever it is you have to say, talk as long as you want to talk. Um, and then we can get you to somebody if you actually need help sorting through your feelings, trying to understand what you're going through. There are licensed clinical social workers or military family life consultants. Sometimes just having somebody that can say, it's okay to not be okay, or it's okay to be frustrated or angry. Let's talk about that. Um, again, I, I referenced Stephen Covey, but one of the things that he talks about in his program of highly effective people is sometimes you don't want to ask more questions Questions. You don't want to pick a scab or dig through things. You just simply want to pair it to somebody what you think you heard so that they can clarify that's what they are trying to get across, right? And so if you say, I'm just so frustrated, I'm so freaking angry, you say, you know, you sound mad and you have a right. Tell me about it, right? And so sometimes it just allows them to open up and feel like it's not wrong for me to be upset. Because it's not wrong for them to be upset. Their truth is their reality. How can I be here for you? Um, and so I just go back to, we have tons of resources if somebody just feels like they're on an island and they need to talk. But sometimes those of us in leadership positions can just be present. I just want to be present for you. Tell me what it is I can do to just hear you. Because we yeah. listen with our ears only half open. <laughs> the rest of the time we're ready to just respond to that's it. it that's it and, and we just want to tell people and show people how smart we are and that does not matter especially right now i give a damn how many degrees you you have right now that means absolutely yeah. nothing to me hey will what you got bro hey chief first thing i like to commend you on being vulnerable i think that sends a very big message to the individuals that you lead to show that hey you're human too on the other side of things, I understand the aspect of getting people to the person to listen to them, but I got to be frank about this. Calling out the bullshit that our guys go through is the issue I think that people have with leadership. You sweep a lot of things under the rug, not speaking about you specifically, but you have people that see this at every level. And although you can get them to the chaplain, get them to talk to the first sergeant, but if those the individuals are the ones with the problems, what do you do with that? And mm. you find this at every level where people know what's going on. They talk about it at smoke pits, at barbecues, but no one addresses the bullshit and you're left there as the neutral person trying to advocate for the right thing and your airmen are looking at you looking like, well, it's right there. Why can't you do something about it? Right. I think that's the biggest thing that airmen want to get after is who's willing to call out the bullshit that's going on in our military and not so, afraid to rock the boat because apparently this boat has been it was made based off of old archaic ideas we all know that it is what it is you get what i mean but now our, the people that's inside of it is more diverse you you feel me so how can we move in a diverse manner with that type of logic but yeah that was a great question will what you got chief i think it's a great question and so the only thing I can relate it to is, is like a test in, in your classroom. If one person gets the question wrong, the teacher thinks it's your problem. Even if three people gets the question wrong, the teacher thinks it's your problem. If greater than half of the class gets the question wrong, they will throw the question out because it just does, it must be a poor question or the study material didn't match. Here's what I have found a lot. I've been in this Air Force. I didn't start as a chief. I grew up as an airman basic all the way through the ranks. So I've been in circles where people are like, gripe about leader, gripe about leader, gripe about leader. I'm like, are you going to do something about it? They're like, no, nah, I'm just going to get out. Gripe about something, gripe about something, gripe about something. Are you going to go tell somebody? Nah, I'm going to wait till I PCS. Gripe about something, gripe. And so literally, if a single person goes and talks about something that doesn't even that doesn't even turn the needle on something. That's the, that's like if you're telling somebody you need to get gas. If I give you a penny, that ain't getting you any gas, right? But if you got a hundred people to give you a penny, all of a sudden at least you can get a dollar's worth of gas, and that'll yes. make a huge difference if you're stuck on the side of the road, right? So all I'm saying is, 
at what point do we come together and say, hey, I'm not the only one that recognized this. I'm not the only one that recognized this. Our voice together will always make that needle move. And so people are always like, well, I individually went to see something. But you talk about it in a circle and two or three or four or five of your other friends have three or four or five other friends that have all seen the same leader or office or position was awry. At what point do we get together and say, there's a problem? Enough is too enough. Too many of us, mm-hmm. yes, too mm-hmm. many of us just walk away. We're like, uh, I'll just I'll just hope somebody after me fixes it. Or I'll just get out and talk bad about it. Or I'll just... We've got to do something together. A single voice isn't going to change it. Think about it. Think about it. How many people have we had removed from positions because of abuse of positional power, sexual misconduct, who knows, whatever. And as soon as they went away, how many people came out of the woodwork and said, oh, I saw this. Right. And I had seen this. Mm-hmm. You know what? They don't be- See, ladies and gentlemen, again, if this is your first time tuning in, this is the Lion's Den, and we have Chief Hope on, and she's speaking truth. And, and Jesus, it, this isn't arithmetic. You get what I mean? It's not. It's simple leadership. But what it is is courageous. It's authentic, right? It's bold. You have to be that way. But, again, this this is what we need. And I don't know if you guys are watching right now, but there's over, to her point, there's over 122 individuals watching right now. Think about that. Use that same analogy. Think about the things that you can change. All right? I got to correct you. I got to correct you, Seth. What's that? Uh, Chief, Chief just counted to 10, so it is arithmetic. It, oh my right God! There. Shut up. <laughs> See, you know you had a question. You know, let me do something to your your page. But nevertheless, but it makes sense though, right? Look what we can do. Well, look what we can do even right now. And, and and honestly, everyone, you don't have to wait for another chief hope. And there's no shade, but the deal is, is this: what what comes after chief? The terminal rank. Right. So therefore, you need to individuals need to be ready to grab that. You get what I'm saying? Be the chief hope. Be the chief. Be the chief Boston. Be the chief. You know, whoever. You know, be who you need to be. But don't be afraid. Be authentic, and then understand your alliance. You understand? Understand your alliance. It's all about coming together. Hey, who was that, Larry? What you got, brother? Hey, 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 chief. Hey, I have never met you until today, and I'm blown away. That's I'm my just, auntie. Just saying, I'm just <laughs> You are truly an auntie to me. Trust me, I got some close aunties in my family. Understand that. Very close. Um, so one of the things I wanted to ask you, and, I, and I'm kind of shifting gears here a little bit, just a tad, is I want to know, because it took some growth, some development to get to who you are now. So for those that are listening and watching, what are, what, are, what do you use to, to, to what like books, like uh, videos, what are you doing to help grow you? For me, in the mornings when I'm showering, I play a motivational video. And I just let it play as I'm, you know, getting my thoughts together and kind of waking up. I want to start my day off with positivity. Like, no negative. I don't want to check Facebook, social media. So I always play. And I don't know if you ever heard of Eric Thomas. That's like my favorite motivational guy right now. But that's who I listen to and some other guys, too. And, and it gets my day started and I got books and all that stuff that I'm reading, but what do you do? What is your regimen? So I am a huge e-reader. Um, I love to read just on the norm, but I'm an e-reader. So I always have a book running in the background and I love, I have this app called great courses. Um, and so I downloaded the app and I buy these courses and you, it's like you get to audit college classrooms in major Ivy league schools around the country. Um, and so I sit in those great courses. I purchase them for just, I mean, tiny amounts of money. Um, and I love to audit those courses and, um, particularly I like to audit, um, human psychology courses because I want to get to know about people who they are, what are they doing? What do they have going on? What are their challenges? What's the science behind them? Um, so Seth was saying earlier, he talked about four lenses and he talked about the blue. A lot of people would assume I was a blue if they first met me because blue is relationship driven. I have very little blue, but I know that about myself. And so I have worked really hard to make sure I foster relationships. I take care of people. I look in to see how they're doing because I know that's a shortfall for me. I'm a traditionalist gold, which means I am 
a box checker. I'm a checklister. I've got to get things done. I will stay at work 20 hours late because I just get distracted with getting, getting things done. Um, and so I have to physically make lists that tell me check on people, ask how they're doing so that I can foster that relationship in the area where I know I'm weak. I love to go back and reread Stephen Covey books. I love to reread, um, the, the books on, uh, human development. I'm a huge fan of like the happiness hypothesis, Ted talks, all of it in regard to how to better your positivity and to give you a brighter outlook. If all we did all day was sit and feel the way we would feel by watching what's happening in the news, you'd never want to get out of bed. You would never want to get out of bed. So I like to get into things that are going to help get me in the right frame of mind to get out there and face other people that have challenges and not be mad at them for those challenges because we've all got them. Um, And so I'm, like I said, I'm an, I'm an e-reader. So those are running almost all the time. Wow. You know, that's, that's, that's dope. Hey ma'am, have you ever heard of the book called the energy bus by John Gordon? Mm-mm. What you better get that in? You know what? <laughs> hey, listen. You know, honestly, it, yeah, he got it too. The deal is, is you, you, you got it already. You, you get what I'm saying. And one of the main, well, one of the first rules and laws is you are the conductor of your bus. And one thing you said that I can appreciate is that you do what you have to do so you can learn people. The unfortunate part is there's a lot of individuals in leadership positions that they. It's your responsibility to learn them. Mm. Ain't that a trip? Get your ass up. Get out of my face. So, no, seriously, like, think about it. You you got everyone in leadership that say, hey, this is the new person coming in, boom, boom, boom. You need to know this. You need to do this is what they like, blah, 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 blah. But think about what is this individual doing to get to know you and get to know people. I think that is the most authentic thing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the yeah. Lions Den. Hey, I just want to let you guys know. I'll get you in a minute, Herm. If you want to call, the number is 618-792-6747. One more time, 618-792-6747. Yeah. What you got, Herm? No. I remember when I was in Kadena, man, we had a new wing commander that came in. We all got briefed on how we supposed to greet him in the morning. We supposed to ask him how he's feeling. Are you serious? Ask him how he's doing. Those words. Don't ask him how he's doing. He gets offended. He wants to know. He wants you to know how he's feeling. I'm like, this can't have came from this mouth, man. This had to be from somebody else. You really came to the gym to tell us this? Wow. <laughs> Word. You, you see? And so, man, well, honestly, like, we wouldn't say it if it wasn't true, but it's almost comical, right? Being, you know, when you, you grow up and you, you kind of understand a little bit more about people, how would someone have the audacity, right? You're in the business, realistically, to take care of the number one resource in the, in the United States is humans, right? Human capital. But you treat them like tools, and it's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. You get more out of people by, you know, how you treat them, and they'll never forget that. Will, what you got? Chief, again, thank you for not just speaking about something, but walking that walk. When I say that that is contagious, to not just the viewers that are watching or that are going to watch this thread, but to everybody you come in contact with is going to influence their leadership style. I think it's imperative that we see more leaders, especially a female leader, that's giving that example for other people to emulate and to exceed because you're training your replacements. And I commend you on being able to come and be transparent on topics of discussion that many leaders avoid. And I wish more people would step up to that plate because the problems are not going to go away just because you don't talk about them. So thank you for that. Absolutely. So I'll tell you, where does my vulnerability come from? So I grew up in an incredibly abusive household. My mom was an abusive alcoholic. Um, I ran away from home at a very early age because it was just a very tumultuous situation. Um, but my mom, we, I grew up in an, in a, in a, in a racial family. My mom was very dark skinned. I grew up in a small town in Texas after my dad retired from the military. And so people were incredibly hard on us as kids. Um, and my mom was illiterate. And so we were consistently told we would never amount to anything. We would never be any smarter than my mother and you tend to just believe those things that you I mean people tell it to you long enough that becomes your truth um and it wasn't until i was in seventh grade and everybody went on a field trip that i didn't get to go on that i had a teacher um 
tell me I had done a good job for something. And I will tell you, it was euphoric. That thing that I had never felt before, which was call, caused or called um, affirmation, like a good job, how far that went, right? Um, and so when I joined the Air Force, man, if I hadn't already had a tough life, I decided to make it tougher on myself by getting pregnant in tech school. Um, and I'm like, oh, now I have a human I have to worry about. And I don't know what to do with my hands. And so um, I was just a hot mess airman. And so being put on bed rest, I gained a ton of weight. So, of course, I got hidden in the night shift on the in the back of the ward so that nobody had to see this out of shape heavy airman who didn't know anything about the air force because she was on bed rest and missed f tech and i mean i was just a hot mess i was not the example of airman that probably um i i could have been but i didn't know any better um and so i remember being seventy thousand dollars in debt before i was a senior airman and i remember being on the weight and body fat management program so i couldn't go to als to put my staff sergeant stripe on and i remember making the transition from ergo to the fit to fight program and never having run because I was a two pack a day smoker. I remember like just being a hot mess of an airman, but I didn't know any better. So nobody had walked me through what I was missing or where I was going wrong. They just loved to tell me I hadn't paid my GTC uh, or not my GTC, but my star card. And so, I mean, I was just, I was just a mess and I didn't know any better. And so now that I'm in my position, I consistently remind myself not to forget where I came from, not to forget how hard it was, not to forget the scuffed up knees and the, the troubled times to all of a sudden pretend that I'm, you know, I got it all together. Um, Cause there are still times when I'm a hot mess, not crying in the middle of the room while my husband's trying to pacify me. Um, and so it's just, it's the truth that you have to just be who you are. Cause when you stop being who you are, people will smell it. It'll just come off of you. They'll smell it. Wow. 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 You know what? I just got a note here. I ain't going to say who, who says something, but, um, basically they nominated you and, uh, I, I think I will have to agree, right. As the new chief master sergeant of the air force, I want to nominate you and ladies and gentlemen, lions, then if y'all believe that y'all give it up, right. If y'all can dig it, if y'all can dig it, if you can dig it, say you can dig it. Right. But no, but seriously, no real talk, man, because that's what it takes. You get what I'm saying? It's just that empathy, just knowing that you give a damn, you know what I mean? Like I've been knowing chief Wright for a while. I mean, a long time. One thing I will say is that he's never changed. He's always been the same way, just consistent. You get what I mean? And just caring. And, and I see that with you. And and I, I get that vibe. And I do want to thank you. I do seriously. love how he relates to people. I mean, yes. I, I do love how he relates to people. I mean, I'm a people person. So I love when people are good to other people and people clearly love just being in his in his presence. Yeah. Right. Because you, you let people know how to feel by how you make them feel already. Now that that's a word. That's a word. So what you got, her, what word you got? So, yeah, I echo, I echo what my brother said. I've always told him that, Hey, y'all be on the lookout for uh, Chief Skabiski. I'm telling y'all it's going to be great things coming. I've, I've, I've always seen your praises. Um, I'd like to thank you for coming out on the show. Are we, we wrapping up huh? Oh well, no! Go ahead. What, my rapper? What, what you got? <laughs> you, yeah, you can you can I, rap. You can rap it. I, I like it. I like to thank you for coming on the show with us today. You know, I know again, re reiterate again. I know you're busy. And shout out to everybody that's been watching. It's like a million people that's been commenting. So I'll be here all day trying to give individual shout outs. But just know that I've been watching. Thank you uh, for watching and showing us support. But again, Chief, thank you for being vulnerable with us, keeping it real with us. And always showing people that you care and empathy is not something that you check the box on that is real with you. Thank you very much. Yeah, right on, right on. Larry, what you got, brother? Hey, Chief, we already gave you kudos, thank yous, and all that. But I'm just saying, you just made me have to might reevaluate myself, you know, when I take up. When I <laughs> Yo! I'm going to wake up and, and really rethink, what am I doing right now? I'm not doing nothing bad, but I could be doing more, and I know that. But listening to somebody like you, you got me like, whoo, the motivation is there. So I appreciate it. And I'll take ownership. I say I nominate you because it's needed and you fit the bill. But I don't run all that. That's not my show. But I'm just going to say you got my vote. That's kind. Thank you. <laughs> you so damn silly. Will, what you got, bro? Chief, kudos to you, ma'am. Uh, really appreciate not just your energy, 
but your vulnerability that you brought to the show today is greatly appreciated. I think you motivated Larry to take his ass to church more consistently as well. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, I hope somebody did. Oh, heathen. No, nah. but go ahead, bro. For real, Chief, thank you. Um, you give us hope in regards to leaders that really connect and understand what other individuals in our Air Force go through. I don't believe in stopping and falling to the opposition. I believe that you should always stand on what's right, and you're a true representation of that, and I, I appreciate you. So thank you for thank coming you. on. Yeah, thank you very much. Right on. And ma'am, and on behalf of the Lions Den, yo, straight up, this is ill. And yeah, just, you know what? I, I'll tell you this, and I'm I'm pretty short in the military left, right, my time. But i tell you one thing I really really wish I met you sooner. I don't think you understand what that means, but I really, really wish because I have a just a bad taste and it, it was and, and it's not based off of what people did. It was, you know, it, it's a multitude of things, but the the amount of just giving a damn means so much. And especially when it comes down to our airmen, do you understand how how impactful just saying, hey, I, I care about you, you know, and just and, and shout out to everybody that's watching. They say, hey, every time they see you or you see them, you give them hugs. I mean, there's been so many days like maybe that's all I really need. Ain't that a trip? I'm a thug, though, for real. But, you know, but just and shut up. Herm, don't say nothing. Shut up. Yo, shut up. No, shut up. Shut, shut up. <laughs> you, she, she will hug you. She hug you, too. And see, now that's a problem. So that, that's how I know that you authentic for real, because I ain't, I ain't hugging Emma. Right. But no, seriously. But real talk. It. It, it, it says so, so much. I promise you, I wish I met you before. And it, yeah, so I want to thank you. And you are always welcome, always welcome back to the den. Ladies and gentlemen, what y'all think? Y'all think she should come back? Uh, yeah, we know we ain't got to ask him. You're coming back. You got to come on back and let us know how you're getting it in over there in Germany. You know what I mean? But thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank listen, you. Be, before we go, do you have one last word that you want to give to the airmen out there? We call ourselves an Air Force family. If your brother was having a tough time, you would sit with him and you would hug him and you would share a beer with him. You would make sure he's okay. Um, too frequently, we brush people off and we walk past them and, you know, we're like, ah, that's not my problem or that's not my airman. Um, that is your brother and your sister. And so please just take a second. Take a second. Think of your child in the back seat. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. The more you ignore them, the more they yell at you. You stop and you let them say the two things they want to say, and then they're quiet. I mean, it's the same thing with our airmen. Take the time. Just stop and listen. See how they're doing. They'll thank you for it. Then they're your brother and your sister. And so I just I ask us to act like the Air Force family we say we are. Wow. See? And now that's hope. For real, for real. Hope, hope. Hope from hope. <laughs> Damn, but thank you, ma'am. So, again, on thank behalf you. of the Lions, then, we thank you for coming in and, and blessing us with your presence and your, your positiveness. It's, seriously, it was most definitely needed. Checking on you, checking on Airmen, and just, just checking up. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, and that concludes the episode of the Lions Den. Make sure y'all tune in Wednesday on the Lions Den. Corona Files. Can you dig it? All right, all right. And we will holla at y'all on the flip-flop. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Make sure to listen to the show on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, and Radio Public, where you can subscribe or via RSS so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you like or dislike this episode, we'd appreciate your feedback on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Lionscast. Check out the book, The Black Collar Mindset, The Art of Strategic Thinking, on Amazon or www.theblackcollarmindset.com, a manual to maneuver through life strategically by holding yourself accountable. Tune in next week for another episode of The Lion's Den with Seth.